Welcome, everyone, to the Super Size Phys Ed Podcast. I am Dave Carney. I'm your host, and I teach in Fort Myers, Florida, PE, kindergarten through fifth grade, and I love it, and they're large groups. So today, I have a very special guest on the show. His name is Dean Heisman, and he is from EduAssess, and it is a or an assessment program, which I've gotten to uh, enjoy and seen the updates and things change and, and just become really, really uh, just fine-tuned over the past month or two, a couple months. And I appreciate Dean. He reached out to me um, again a couple of months ago, and we just started talking about this. And I gave him some feedback, and him and his team really worked hard, not just for my advice, but from other people. And you know, as a teacher, I was telling him the things I really enjoy about it and things that, um, you know, just I was having trouble with. So, you know, I appreciate him and, and his team, again, working uh, just to help us te- PE teachers out, basically. And I had a really great conversation with him. So here we go. All right, so I'm here with Dean. Dean, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Dave? I'm great. Thank you so much for uh, for joining our uh, little podcast here today. No, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure to be on your show. Yeah, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so um, I was a physical head of physical education uh, for eight years in a, in a London school. Um, and whilst I was there, I was, I was, uh, whilst being head of physical education, um, I was also a lead practitioner. So a lead practitioner, I'm not sure if it's the same no. in the US. What is know. that? I was going to ask you what that, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. I've heard of it. Sure. Yeah. Um, they used to be called uh, Advanced Skills Teacher, um, AST, um, in the UK. But basically, that it's when you um, help teachers improve their teaching. So you've right. been, you know, you've got, you've, you've you've become quite experienced. So you go into lessons, or you work with teachers closely to help improve their teaching. So again, I don't know if you have the gradings for individual teachers, but in the UK we have um, we have a, a body called Ofsted, and Ofsted are the they regulate the quality of teaching in schools and the quality of schools. So, for right. example, there might be a teacher who is um, at a grade of good. So there's four grades. Um, inadequate, satisfactory, good, and outstanding. So they may be uh, the it's teacher. A dog. Go, go ahead. <laughs> I, <laughs> sorry. I think a dog. Uh, <laughs> What's no, the dog's name? Uh, a peppermint, actually. Peppermint, <laughs> nice. Um, yes. It's refreshing. Yes. <laughs> Destroying something here. So again, we could yeah. I always cut some of this out. So um, yeah. If you, I think you should. Leave it in. Okay. Leave it. <laughs> just leave it. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so, um, so yes, we have a. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Tell us about your teacher grading system because we do have one. So yeah. I don't know if it's how great it is, but uh, go ahead. Yeah. So inadequate um, schools are graded on that, and also teachers were graded on that before. That doesn't happen anymore. But um, inadequate, satisfactory, um, good, and outstanding. So often you maybe work. I'd work with a teacher who is maybe. Um, potentially satisfactory and they want to get to good or they're good and they want to get to outstanding mm-hmm. um, and I'd work with them uh, to work on their pedagogy you know um, lesson planning and so forth and then part of that lead practitioner role I was also responsible um, for improving uh, the use of technology in education uh, within my school um, so uh, for example instead of using apps in a gimmicky way in a lesson oh this is good app this is a good app how could you use it to really um, enhance learning significantly? Um, so that would be, you know, the logistics of the way out. You lay out the class, when to use it, what stage of a lesson, as opposed to just use it here, use it there, whenever. Um, use it in a really constructive way and not use it all the time. You know, some, some, some things have their place, like where you should use them and some uh, you should use them on other days or different times of the year and so forth. So um, mm-hmm. that was my time there. After that, should I go on? After yeah, what I did after yeah. that? Please. Yeah, yeah. And, and where, are you, where are you coming from? I should have asked, where exactly in uh, England are you located? I, I'm in London. Okay. Oh, London, okay. London, London yeah. Uh, awesome. A place called Walthamstow, which is uh, yeah, just uh, slightly out from the centre, uh, from, you know, uh, London Bridge and so on. It's a bit oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
so yeah so I I've done that for eight years and I, I loved teaching it's fantastic and I mean obviously I'm talking preaching to the choir uh, the <laughs> right. people are probably listening yeah. they, they know they know how it goes that's great um so but I think the, the reason I wanted to uh change is whilst I was there in the last couple of years before I left teaching um I I this is before I was a designer so I'm currently now a UX UI designer I'll come on to that in a moment but mm. um so what I did is bef I designed um, a platform to help teachers save time marketing because obviously we can all appreciate um, they spend a lot of time uh, speaking to teachers. Uh, done, I researched and basically um, most teachers were doing their marketing um, after school or on weekends, which right. of course is, is not ideal. Um, so I'm, I very crudely designed it on PowerPoint. Uh, so I got PowerPoint, designed it on there, uh, designed what I thought would work and was talking to teachers. And then um, from there, I outsourced the build. I didn't know how to code and so forth. So that got built. Um, and then I got my school using it and we were using it and it's all great. Um, and some other schools are using it. Um, but it, I guess because I designed it and it's without any kind of really thorough design consideration, again, before I'd studied design, um, it wasn't a really scalable product. And, you know, it wasn't the most enjoyable thing. To, it worked, but was it the most enjoyable to use? Um, so I then uh, studied UX at um, General Assembly, which yeah. I understand. Now what is that? I'm not sure what that is. What, what, can you explain sure. that? Yeah. Yeah, you have it. Um, it started in the US, actually, the, the company. So the company is basically for um, if you want to it's study something in technology, usually. So it might be UX design. It might be it might even be marketing. It might be business management, those sort of areas, if you like. Um, and they've kind of made it quite trendy. Um, mm. And I mean, you, you pay and you do a course. So you do what's called a 10 week immersive course. Um, or you could do a short course and you basically you'd spend five days every day for 10 weeks or sometimes 12 weeks, it varies, um, studying this topic. So you do loads of tasks. So for example, in UX, we had to come up with our own apps um, and based on research, you know, we had to put, uh, do what's called affinity mapping. We had to do interviews, uh, write personas. So personas are who you think of your idea right. of who you're aiming this product at and you kind of come up with a story about them and this, avatar you know, I would, yeah. the avatar I've yeah i've heard it called that yeah yeah I've heard, it's, yeah. yeah yeah so um that was fascinating to do so you, we've done all that and um so that was that was uh that was it so um i uh i and then i'd done that whilst i was teaching of an evening and and so on and uh done my, my own bits and pieces and then I say I'd, I'd done some. I left teaching, um, and as I left teaching, I went I went travelling and I freelanced for lots of different companies doing UX UI design. Um, whilst I went to Thailand, I was there three four months, um, and uh, and I got a job whilst I was out there. So I came back to London and I carried on working for a start. And but this wasn't in teaching. But all the, during this time, I was redesigning EduSS because right. um, as you because obviously before it was done on PowerPoint. Now I was designing with proper tools proper process um you know doing it all the proper way and obviously i was working for startups so um i was learning a lot from them of course how to kind of make a product a quality product and do it in a scalable way and uh, making sure that it's, it's a good product um that people love to use well hopefully they like to use anyway yeah um and yeah and then i came back um from thailand and yeah i carried on working for startups and i'm now currently working for a company um in London Bridge, uh, we work on apps and so on, whilst working on uh, EduSS. Okay, well, and we're gonna get to that in just a moment as far as the sure. the whole program. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's that's, that's great. I, I didn't know, uh, we've been talking for a while, I didn't know a lot of that, so uh, it's very, yeah, interesting, no. very interesting work yeah. and, and, and field. Um, so let me go back a tiny bit more, um, sure. not to your childhood or anything like that, but maybe, uh, <laughs> like where does your, love for sport or PE like how did that how did that happen or what or what did you play as a child or, or you know, sure middle school high school that's a that's a great question um yeah it's hard to think uh all these years ago but yeah um <laughs> you're not so, that old <laughs> yeah, yeah well no gr growing up um I I played a phenomenal amount of sport um I so my love for sport I guess I played it in I started playing from football for my district 
um, in primary school. So primary school. Soccer, is, football. Sorry. So soccer. soccer. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, soccer. No, no, it's okay. American football. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there's American yeah. football. And, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Soccer. Yeah. yeah. For us. So playing <laughs> soccer um, from primary school. So primary school in the UK, uh, you know, so I was, I would have been about age, um, you know, nine, 10 and 11. So uh, around that age, started playing uh, football. But I was also, um, and then I went into secondary school, uh, you know, and uh, whilst I was there, I, I basically done every sport. I played for the football teams. I played for the, my district. So I played for my county. So London, I represented London in football. Oh. But also, I done a lot of so, uh, soccer was the main sport I played. If you mm. if you had to pick one, but I was also I done athletics for my county. You know, as a 800, 400 uh, meter, and that was my distance. Nice. Um, not fast enough to do 100 and not uh, <laughs> fit enough to do um, any, anything longer than that, right, marathons right. and so on. So uh, athletics and cross country, um, which is obviously uh, fairly long, but it's, it's not too extensive. Um, and every tip, like I just put, got involved in everything as a, as a student. Um, but I guess the main sport was always soccer the way through. Um, and uh, I played for um, pro semi-professional football in uh, the UK for some teams, um, which is fantastic. Yeah. And I, 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 I done the usual thing of going to a professional club um, and being part of their school of excellence. So that would be, I don't, I don't know if you even know the team, uh, Charlton FC football club. You probably won't know it. No, uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't, but I'm sure it's, <laughs> no. it's, just, it's just me. It's, yeah. the, uh, it's Most the people. <laughs> American, you know, <laughs> Most people in the UK won't know them either, to be honest. Okay. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not a Premiership team, as they. I saw Chelsea yesterday on TV. That's what I saw. Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> I do. I played against Chelsea. Really? So, wow. The school of Exxon. Chelsea and Manchester played. United. Those are the only in the. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, who's but, uh, Yeah. Who's that I one team that? Enough. Who's that one team that came out of nowhere? That uh, there was a team the last couple Leicester. of years. That, Leicester. Yes. City. Yes. Leicester that was. City. Yeah. Well, Phenomenal. I, I, I actually listen to a podcast. This, this is totally going off topic, but that's okay. Um, I listened to a podcast on, on about them. I think it was like Freakonomics or something that they went into the, you know, because as far as money and everything goes, obviously Manchester United and I, I guess Chelsea and some of the other ones. And they, they have like, I mean, a, a small fraction of the, the money and the yeah. it, it just and just the way they came. I, I guess I don't remember everything about it, but it was just it was a almost like a. A, a Rocky Balboa story. If you follow the, yeah. you know, like it was just yeah, a, absolutely. You know. It was like Moneyball, wasn't it? With yes. The, oh yeah, yeah, yes. Is it in terms of that baseball team? I'm not. I can't recall yeah. the baseball team. It was the um, o- Oakland uh, Athletics, Oakland A's. Yeah, yeah. So it's the equivalent of them in mm-hmm. that year um, when they got, you know, obviously they got in the top three or so. Um, they didn't win that league, did they? Um, no. It's funny because I, I wanted to. Say, I thought they did, and they did not. Uh, you no, talking about the didn't. baseball, right? The Oakland yeah. A's. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, I think all, all, all my, by the way, all my knowledge on this is based on the film um, with Brad Pitt. <laughs> so, um, apologies okay. for everyone who actually knows about baseball. Um, no, yeah. it's so funny because I actually read that book a long time ago, Moneyball, and then I, then the movie came out. I was like, oh man, this is great. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they made it to the, the the like the championship uh, semifinals, yeah. or, and then they they lost. But uh, that was amazing. Okay, we're getting off topic. Yeah. That's okay. This is yeah. this is good. This is good. Um, <laughs> so that was, and that's my knowledge of. Uh, football slash soccer um sure although i'd like to be better <laughs> or more extensive um all right so going off of that so okay so that <laughs> playing football um yeah that led you to become a pe teacher um kind of, well, how'd that happen i guess we're going, i think, i guess i'm going back here no so i'm um, yeah so i've done a lot of that in university i studied sports and exercise science which obviously is um, a, a degree that you obviously mm. is in the US as well sometimes mm. sports science people do sports and exercise science they're all fairly the same thing and um, so I've done that and uh, I was going to do a PhD in um, following sports and exercise I very I you know my de- degree um, I was um, yeah I was working with the, the PhD students a lot and doing research with them so I was very keen to do that but I think I, I guess I didn't I, I knew that I was going to be sp- all my time would be spent in a lab um, if okay. I were to do a PhD, which is fantastic. I mean, what yeah. an amazing thing to do. And the research obviously goes on to um, help many people. Um, right. But I think just being, I think being in that lab 
um, all the time in that way. I, I guess I didn't want to do so. I, I during that time I was coaching a lot. I I done my what in the UK uh, FA level one, two, three, uh, UEFA A, uh, UEFA B rather coaching badges um, in soccer. So I was doing my coaching. I've done my basketball coaching uh, badges and all those things. And uh, and I was going into schools um, and working with young kids whilst I was doing my degree. So it was called the sports ambassador scheme. I think it was where you'd have university students go into schools and coach them but they are part of that you would need to get your badges as well right. um so i think that experience was key in me um you know going into teaching i think i was inevitably going going to go into teaching or coaching um at some point um even for my work experience in secondary school i, I went and worked with um, a, a professional uh, soccer team to help coach in t- in schools and so on so I think all these experiences um, led me to then study teaching. Um, yeah, interestingly, um, if please stop me if I'm uh, waffling no. on too much. No. You're but good. Interestingly, I'm, I applied for the teaching after, so I done my degree in sports and exercise science, but I applied too late to become a teacher, to be on the teacher course, which in the UK is called a PGCE, um, postgrad certificate in education. Um, so I applied too late. So I had a year before I could apply again. So I was like, oh, what am I get? What what to do? And I thought I always kind of liked the idea of maybe doing personal training, being a personal trainer, like not long term, but I think it'd be good because after you finished, once you've got your, you've done some personal training, you could always do that. You know, freelance, you could do it on the side, you could do it. You know, right. um, so I I'd, I'd done personal training for a year, um, uh, working in the city, training, you know, tri- bankers who were doing their triathlons and things like that. Um, so uh, yeah. That was fun. And then I got my PGC. Nice. Actually, it was a personal trainer for a while too. Um, oh, really? Okay. Well, yeah, mostly North Carolina and then a little bit here in Florida. But um, that was before I was a PE teacher. And then I kind of, I don't know, I just fell into this and I, I want to devote, I guess, more time just to PE and the, the content creation and things like that. So um, kind of got out of it. I, I still love it. It was, it was fun. <laughs> it's fun seeing yeah. people reach their goals and things like that. So I enjoyed it. Um, so let's move on sure. to to assessments. Let's talk about assessments. We're going to sure. go a little gritty here. So tell me your experience with assessment, um, and then we'll go on to you know edu assess. But um, you know, <coughs> I guess your role or and your experience with assessment and PE or education. Sure. So um, assessment is very dear to me. I think it's uh, when I was studying uh, doing my PGC. Um, you basically go to two schools as a PGC. You do a short term one, uh, which is a few months. I think it's two terms or so. And then the rest, the second school is longer, you know, is, um, I don't know how many months it is. Is it longer, more terms. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess I was very, because of our lecturer, I think, um, I think he had a big impact on me being interested in uh, assessment because there was a one there was a lot of change in assessment assessments always changing curriculums are changing um the the goalposts are changing and so forth Mm -hmm. um and it was i think assessment was really key to kind of guiding what was taught i don't think assessment you know everyone obviously there's a big discussion about the fact that um people you know sometimes students are being taught to pass a test as opposed to learn you know um yeah but I do think, uh, you know, a, AFL, assessment for learning. Do you use that phrase, assessment for learning in the U.S.? I'm not sure you do. I'm not, I don't think so. No. A- AFL, no, so, it, it reminded me of the American yeah. Football League. The American <laughs> Football League, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, of course. I think that's um, the same thing. So. No, no. So <laughs> AFL is a, was a big um, scheme that was brought in into the U.K. Uh, over 10 years ago now. Um, and it was about using assessment to enhance learning. And I really believed in that. Um, and I thought it was very interesting that some uh, topics would have very specific criteria. So, for example, basketball would literally say, um, you know, I'd be able to pivot with the ball. Um, so pivot is obviously a very specific term and very obviously to basketball. Mm-hmm. And then you would do another sport, say uh, soccer, for example, and obviously you wouldn't use pivot but essentially the skills that those activities do are very similar in the sense that they're invasion games right so basketball football um rugby 
or American football. They're all in yes. Beijing games, right? So they have transferable skills. So I thought that was very interesting that in order to enhance students' learning, I think it's key to have a broad and balanced differentiated curriculum. So broad in the sense that you offer a variety of topics, um, but it's not balanced if you, or if you offer, for example, a lot of schools were offering a lot of invasion game activities. So they would offer basketball and football, and then they would do something like um, netball or rugby. So they're all invasion games, so the same skill. So one term a student's learning about passing and dribbling, or, and then the next term they're essentially learning the same skills. So, and I, and so, it's, so getting back to your point about assessment is that if you, your assessment overall is saying that skills need to be able to do skills that um, stem from different topics, the NAS going to inform the activities that are delivered to the students, which means they get a better education. So, for example, if the curriculum says they need to have skills, uh, for example, like composition um, and choreography, so that's obviously going to be in dance, so dance. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you have uh, something, this part of the assessment says something like they need to be able to, um, they need to be able to use a variety of serves so obviously that's going to be involved in net games, so like volleyball and tennis and so forth. Right. Um, and if the assessment is making those things explicit, um, then that means um, then the students are going to get a better education because of that. So that's where my fascination. So it starts from the yeah. top. So it informs what topics are delivered to the students. And then when you get to those specific uh, topics, then you can design um, criteria or rubrics um, that are um, transferable. So if if in term one, I'm doing uh, basketball, and then maybe the last term I happen to be doing soccer, I don't need to relearn the criteria if the, they have the same wording. Because you, I mean, the criteria we were using, we were using one criteria um, for invasion games. So they were doing basketball and soccer, and the criteria right. was exactly the same, just by spending a bit more time thinking of the wording. Um, and that means the students uh, understand the criteria better and they're spending more time learning as opposed to learning what the criteria says, you know. So yeah. that's where my fascination comes from. I love it. And I totally, uh, it's funny. Um, I, I didn't until I say, this is my eighth year teaching PE. And the first couple of years before I kind of got on social media and things like that, I didn't really know and I, what a lot of these terms even were, like invasion games. I was like, I, I didn't even know what that was. I just, sure. you know, we, we had, um, I think I, t I used to teach, and I think a lot, I think some PE teachers, especially over here still do teach um, during seasons, like, oh, it's uh, football, you know, American football season. So let's do some football skills and it's uh, mm -hmm. baseball season in the spring. So let's do baseball then. And, and without even thinking about, well, that's a striking fielding game. And, and mm -hmm. you know, just, and so I like the, the transfer, the transferable skills um, there in obviously, and, and growing up, I don't know about you, but I didn't, I didn't think about that. Like when I would play, uh, I play a lot of, I guess, American football, mo mostly just in the backyard kind of thing with the friends and, and hockey. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize those things could transfer. Like I, I didn't think about that when I was a kid. And so I enjoy yeah. teaching that to my students now that, you know, if you play soccer and then you play uh, hockey or basketball, it's like a lot of the same basic skills and, you know, just looking for open space and give and goes and just like everything's, you know, you could trans as different, different ball or different puck or whatever it is, different sure. object, but same skills. And it's, uh, you know, I love that. I think it's yeah. great. So. What, what was interesting is uh, the school I went to, I'm sure they won't mind me saying it, it was a long time ago now, <laughs> but uh, when I first went there, basically the boys would do football or rugby in the winter and then cricket in the summer and the girls would do a netball in the winter yeah. and then do um, rounders, which is, I don't know if you have rounders, sure softball, it's... basically. Softball, okay. Light softball, basically. Yeah. Softball um, in the summer. And this is, this is again, this, is, this feeds into assessment because um, I, 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 I then introduced things like we were doing badminton, so we were doing net games, we were doing invasion games because we were doing soccer and basketball and so forth, but we were doing um, dance, um, and then we were doing athletics, um, you know, uh, we couldn't do swimming, unfortunately, uh, we would love to have had that. Um, so, I mean, there are seven areas and we, so there was a bit of interest, there was a bit of um, 
an interesting change because a lot of students who didn't necessarily like physical education then did because they obviously there were there were more activities for them to be able to be involved in um mm. so they might not you know if if football's being delivered and you're not sorry if you're if soccer's being delivered and you're not good <laughs> at soccer then the, you're not gonna like pe are you but if you know that you it's even and it's fair and there's more democracy in that everyone gets a chance to okay i'm not good at soccer but i will be good at maybe dance next term so no one has a kind of monopoly of you know i'm the, i'm the best at pe basically mm. everyone is you know getting a fair access um, so that was interesting so the people who always played football I had a bit of backlash from some of the, the boys you can imagine um, yeah. oh why aren't we doing football and I was the new teacher so um, so uh, you know there was a bit of a, a curve there but once I, I got them on board um, and and the other students who didn't necessarily like physical, edu physical education then did so um, that was fantastic and that was that is assessment in a way although it's designing the curriculum it, it, it's part of assessment as well and that and they definitely a lot of students who ended up going on to study at um, A level and GCSE would not have done that, studied physical education if in year seven, the younger year, they weren't given a broad and balanced differentiated curriculum. Right. Yeah. No, I see that quite a bit where some students, they just they flourish at, you know, other things. And then they, you know, <laughs> like you said, in soccer or something, they're not maybe not the greatest uh athlete but that's okay and they if as long as they i tell them as long as they try um and then we'll because we will move on to other things that they will enjoy so um yeah i, I really like that so so very similar even across the ocean there you go <laughs> there you go there you go um all right let's so let's move on to the uh i guess to the big question uh why edu assess uh, actually let me back up you told me something before we start recording that i really I appreciate it, and I told you I, I heard something similar from actually from Jared as to why you uh, got into. Uh, I'm talking about Jared Robinson. Um, why you yes. kind of? He's fantastic. Yeah, he is, and uh, you know fantastic. why you got into the, uh, you know, this field of assessment. And uh, can you explain that again? Because that was a great answer, and I wish we were recording that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a way, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I left the reason. One of the reasons I left. Uh, teaching i well one i was being fascinated with technology my mind was being occupied by, by technology and its impact but i think um i was a lead practitioner so i was quite i was very senior in the school um but i could only and i, I don't want to offend anyone by saying this in that i could only affect i could only affect the students in my my school and maybe with the local area um, mm -hmm. you know the borough yeah um but if you create something that can, you know, enhance, you know, everyone's uh, learning, um, then, uh, you know, if it's a tool, like a product, obviously, like like it, what I'm trying to do with EduSess, then um, then that, that's going to enhance education as a whole. I've, my education was very important for me in terms of, um, you know, making sure uh, I enjoyed life. You know, my background was, uh, I come from a very interesting area, uh, let's say. And uh, I, education was key in making sure that I, you know, I was on the right path and all that. So education is very dear to me. And if I can help young people um, with education, uh, then the more I can help, the better. Um, and so that's that's one of the reasons I wanted to. And I think, uh, yeah, Jared um, kind of alluded to the same similar thing, right? Yeah, I mean, one of the things Jared says. Sorry, my dog's making noise again. One of the things Jared says. Uh, uh, one of my, I guess, favorite things he says is, it, "Good teaching doesn't scale," and so without mm -hmm. technology, and I mean, if you're a good teacher, like you said, you can only affect in a positive way, you know, the the kids you interact with. However, yeah. with technology, and in your case, obviously, the same thing, where you could affect the whole, you know, teachers from all over the world, and in in that case, mm -hmm. you know, students all over the world um, by your uh by your assessment pieces and, and things you put you put out so um no i think it's great <laughs> i do i mean like um it's a great reason for it too you know for what you're doing because I, I i love i guess now i, I really do want to start talking about uh edu assess um, i love okay. the changes well since we started since we started talking there's sure. been lots of changes updates um and i'm not taking credit for that but um i i, I like when we had our back and forth kind of meetings and i'm I was struggling with something and you're like, okay, let's, you know, let's work on that or I'll have my 
program or work on that this weekend. And it, you guys are, you guys have been great. So can you explain, hey, this is, I know it's a big question here, um, why edu assess and what it is and who it is? Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess everything. <laughs> I'm going to let you talk for a little bit. Uh, go ahead. Sure. So um, Educate, Edu Assess did kind of the slogan is it's the fastest way to provide personalized feedback to students using a criteria or rubric um, in, mm-hmm. in, in the US case, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting because that's always a thing that I kind of have an issue because I have to say criteria, but I know that people in the US, are, like when we look at our numbers, more people in the US are using Edu Assess, in fact, than than in the UK, which is very interesting. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's great. But, but, but we're using the word uh, criteria, um, which I know when someone in the US is looking for the platform, uh, obviously they're typing rubric. Um, so going back, yeah, why do you say so? Um, there are a lot, there have been loads of tools where you can create rubrics, right? So we, you know, we've all seen them as, you know, online yeah. rubric creator and so on. Uh, you could you could go on at Google Sheets and, you know, I've seen people create Mm-hmm. Uh, rubrics on there and it does a job um but but that i mean there's a saying isn't there you can never have enough coffee shops um <laughs> in a way um but i'm not i'm not trying to create another one of what already exists but i think it could also be better um so a nicer experience um and one that's a bit more uh, that that is a prod a rounded product um you know my experience looking at working on product development a product isn't that you make something and then you just put it out there and that's it. A product is, first of all, you, you do your research, uh, then you maybe make something small, which we did with EduAssess, um, and then you get feedback, you update, you feedback, and you constantly update it to make it a fantastic product. Because it's not, it's never going to be great first time. Like, I mean, I feel bad that the people who signed up in the start have probably gone back onto EduAssess and gone, ah, actually, uh, this isn't very good, and not gone back. But it, um, because it, we put it out early, um, good enough to meet, if you like, the minimal viable product, but uh, mm. it was probably like only offering a few things that would help them. Uh, but now, I guess with all the updates and so on, it, it's a it's a very, I think it's a, quite a rounded product. So one of the interesting things is um, with this product is if we were trying to, you know, promote this to English teachers or maybe a history teacher, the way they mark is very different because obviously they do like di- more diagnostic marking and like writing about grammar, maybe, you know, obviously an English teacher where mm. they'd be writing on the paper and on the essay. Um, so although there are situations and I mean, English teacher does assess according to a criteria because they will say, you know, they use continuous prose, they use a, a range of um, um, writing techniques and so forth. They're, so they will be assessing according to criteria, but most of their marking will literally be on the paper saying, you know, you need a paragraph here and so forth. Um, apologies if I'm, I'm watering down what uh, the, the marking that- English No, this is good, yeah. For any English teachers. So yeah. uh, with with this product, it was all about focusing at practical, uh, practical-based subjects. So uh, most of our, obviously being a PE teacher, most of the, if you like, the marketing and stuff is being geared towards physical education. Um, but it's it's mainly aimed at teachers who teach a practical subject. And the reason for that is because p- teachers who teach a practical subject, most of the time, mark using a rubric or a criteria. So if I teach drama, they accept, they watch the performance of their class or they see a little you know performance piece and they will be using it. They won't be right. There's no, they sometimes do write, do essays as well, but most of it is on the performance and they will be using a rubric. Um, the same for if I do designing technology, they, the student will make a product, maybe like a clock or something, and then uh, it will be marked based on did they use a variety of joints, did they uh, use a variety of mediums, and uh, you know, have, is the product uh, safe? You know, all those sort of things. And the same with art, um, art. So art, drama, physical education, uh, design and technology, um, and music, of course. So you're listening. Oh, are they using a variety of instruments? Is there a good pitch? Is there a melody? You know, so they're the main uh, subjects that this product is focused at. And the reason we wanted to be laser focused is that you get, you get greater quality if you're laser focused on a, on a group. And there are other products to be fair that kind of deal with, um, if you want to mark an essay, then turn it in, you know, um, for example, is it, I'm sure you've heard of, have you heard of this product? Uh, turn it in. Oh no, I'm sorry. I don't know if that's yeah. the name of it. I was there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm, pro- I'm promoting someone else's product. Yeah, no, no. Uh, 
so it's a product for marking essays and so on. it's usually okay. used at university university okay. level and so on um but if, if people want to mark in that way then they would use products like that whereas uh, this one is about i'm on the sports field i can use my phone you can obviously use your phone with edgss and you could mark and then when you go back to your office all the feedback is already there and you can obviously see it on desktop um so it's been specifically designed for that practical based subject who's not always at their laptop and wants to use their phone when they're on the sports field and carry on that assessment or in a drama hall or in the art gallery when they're doing an art assessment and so on. Yeah, that's great. And we'll get into maybe some of the features in a moment. So who um, who's your team? Or you don't have to give last names if you don't want to, but like sure. you have a, you have a, a team of, well, go, go ahead. Why don't you describe who you have or what they do? Sure. So um, there's myself. Um, you know, founder, and obviously I'm just kind of coordinating everyone, and designer. So I do all, all the design uh, work. And um, then we have uh, two developers. Um, and they, so two developers uh, who are not in the UK. Um, and then we have one who is in the UK who literally lives down the road from me. Um, so we all, so we've got three developers essentially. Um, and we, yeah, we communicate using Slack. I don't know if you've yeah. heard of this, uh, mm. Slack, yeah. So we communicate using Slack um, and everything's very fluid uh, in terms of they're very responsive. And because, I mean, with the person, Dan, who's a, is a good friend of mine as well, he can literally come around and we can talk through things. Um, and uh, yeah, it, that's, that works very well. Um, yeah. yeah. What is your like? What is his role, or, or what you know? What what is your strength, and what is his strength? I know yours is very techy. Sure. Is, is his? Go ahead. So um, obviously, mine is on like being education and design and so on. So I I focus on that. And Dan is essentially he's he's just quality assurance of the code. So he um, for, at the start we you know he was for for example we spoke about how the the platform could be set up architecturally. Um, in terms of code in a way that was scalable and, you know, allowed for features to be introduced down the line. Um, and, he, you know, any code that my uh, my team, my external team do, then he can quality assure and check it. Yeah. Right. Um, so I didn't realize until we, this interview that it, this is more of a side project. I mean, I mean, I know you do this. Uh, you have another job also. Is that what you're saying? Like freelancing and is this like a side job for you or? Um, edge you assess or is this like is this your main focus right now or do you have you know i mean do you do this when everybody's asleep or you like <laughs> or, or late at night or no so um it's my it's it's 50 50 at yeah. the moment so okay. I, I designed like i said i work for uh an agency at the moment um in uh, london bridge um and i'm actually uh potentially going to be doing some work um more long term with another educational platform um, mm -hmm. but I can't say too much about that. That's yet. Okay. <laughs> it's still, uh, it's still, yeah, there's things need to be signed and so on, but yeah, so I'll be working with another educational. So maybe you'll um, hear about that down the line. Um, but my focus, my focus is EduSS, uh, predominant. Yeah. So it's, I'd say 50, 50, yeah. um, initially EduSS was more time, um, and just to get it going. But now that it's kind of when the, it's in a good state in the sense that the basic features are there. There's no, there's no, there's not too many bugs. Um, we're constantly squashing bugs in the code and um, it's, it's enough to be 50, 50 um, and still obviously getting users But you know, the, the growth is um, it's fantastic. The response has been, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't, it didn't, I didn't set out to do this in this way, this way or we set out to do this, but uh, the response has been fantastic and, yeah, some of the comments are yeah, really lovely. Yeah, and I, like I said, I love the, uh, and we'll get into some of the, maybe the updates or uh, or that, uh, just some of the things I really enjoy about it. But so I have to, I have to press a little bit. Are you, are you going to become the next James Bond? Is that what this, the, the, this top secret, <laughs> top secret mission? <laughs> you're, on, you're, you're like, I can't say much about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's basically um, a company who already exists. Uh, uh, it, in education, um, I'm, I may be working with. They they got in contact and I'm. I gotcha. Maybe working with yeah. I just yeah. had to throw that out there. Um, all right. So some of the things I really like is that you can you can assess like you can you can assess the whole class at once, or mm -hmm. you can put or you can set a standard and say okay everybody has, uh, it, you know everybody's um, 
emerging. I guess I'm using some of the terms here. You know, sure. everybody's not emerging. And then you could also, but then you could go individually and, you know, reassign some of the criteria or some of the things to other mm -hmm. students. Um, and also, I mean, I guess it's kind of the same line. Um, just more specifically, like, let's say, go back to soccer, um, you know, let's say dribbling the ball with control, you can just set mm -hmm. that for the whole class. And then if you see somebody not doing it, you could unclick it in, you mm -hmm. know, half a second. Or yeah. if they do above and beyond that, there's other criteria. Can you kind of explain that? Because I, I love that about, uh, it's really fast. So I really enjoy yeah. that and appreciate that. So can you kind of go into that, the, the quickness sure. of it? Sure. So um, in terms, I'll start with assessment and then I'll talk about the criteria because mm -hmm. that's one of the kind of powerful things about it that you can create any criteria. But so in terms of assessing, the way we assess typically, um, please uh, do correct me if, I mean, I don't know how you do it, but in the research, basically you're assessing a class. So if you're a PE teacher, you're on the sports field, for example, in the sports hall and you see your class, you know that um, over, you know, you look at the students and you could say, okay, this is a year eight class. Um, I know you guys got different age groups. So mm -hmm. year eight in the UK uh, would be like age 12. So the, the age 12, you've taught them before maybe. You know that they are all at least at the very minimum emerging. So you don't need to go through every student and click, you know, right. click, click the part of the criteria that um, emerging would uh, entail. Mm -hmm. So what you would do is you say, okay, all of them are emerging. We know that. All of them are securing. We know that. So you could do that straight away. And then it's kind of, you know, you're doing a more granular assessment where you go, okay, this student can do this part of the assessment, or whereas this student can do that part of the assessment. So then you get more granular. And the way you do that is by clicking what are called grade descriptors. So grade descriptors are literally, they're, they're in these bubbles on the platform, basically bubbles which contain the text. So for example, um, I'm, I'm assessing uh, Susan. It seems to be my go-to name, Susan, for some reason. <laughs> Susan, yeah. When you're making up a name, when it's a female, it's Susan. When it's a boy, it's John. Um, so when you're assessing Susan, uh, you can say whilst on the move, she can uh, use a variety of passes, um, for example. So she can use a variety of passes. Whereas Johnny, for example, um, uh, whilst on the move, he can use one or two passes. So instead of using a variety, he can only use one or two. So I would obviously click the Susan variety and for Johnny, I would only click the one or two part of the criteria. Um, and that speeds it up. I think, so that kind of deals with that part because that's essentially what you're doing when you're assessing using a rubric is you're ticking parts that they do. But now it's more intelligent than that because obviously you can do it very quickly because you can apply it to all the first part. But then we've got, obviously got a new feature called quick text where you want to give a comment. So you don't just want to have parts of the criteria as the feedback. That would be a bit robotic, wouldn't it? So if I said to the student, whilst on the move, you can pass the ball with using a variety of passes. Okay, that's not too bad. But um, say you wanted to say, make it a bit more personalized. I would want to say, well done, Susan. This term, you've been fantastic. Um, in um, You've grown with confidence and you have been particularly good at um, using a variety of passes and you've attained a grade, you know, exceeding or whatever. Mm. So what's clever about it is in, instead of writing that for every student, you could have kind of this um, templated phrase, and then you could use an at symbol, you know, like when you do using social media at name. So if you type in at name, then the student's name will appear there. And if you do at grade, the grade they got will also appear there. So now I'm writing, uh, well done at name. You have done fantastic, done very well this term in attaining a at grade and that will apply to every student so now you've got a so it's it's going to apply to all students and it's going to have their name it's going to have their personalized grade so and then they're going to have the areas that they've done well at and the areas that they need to work on um, so that way this significantly speeds up the time that you're giving feedback to students and then you can just print it to a sticker um, and stick it on if they've got some sort of a folder or booklet or, or whatever or you know um, that, you know, the te they'll be able to log in and view that as well down the line. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic. I watched a video last night that you sent of the, the, the update 2.0. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the at grade yeah. and the at uh, name. I think that's just, uh, I love it. Really, it's fantastic. Especially, you know, again, I've seen the updates in the past couple months and where I was like, sure. I, and I, I like how you've actually simplified some things too. You got rid of some 
uh, for me, it was it just maybe it's just the Amer- American, uh, <laughs> you know, terms and things. You got rid of a few things that I wasn't quite sure of, and I'm I'm not mm-hmm. sure if everybody was like that. But I like how you simplified things basically, and and you update at the same time. So sure, yeah. Um, so what about the? Is it hard trying to go because you, you're basically going global, but there's different. Uh, you know, as Americans, we have a different grading system or we use different mm-hmm. vocabulary. Um, yeah. How have you, how does that work or how have you found that, you know, has that been difficult or not too bad? Um, so it's, well, it seems okay now. Like at, at the yeah. moment, it's it's fine. What we what we thought about is what do, what's the most common denominator between everyone around the world who's assessing in this way? And essentially, everyone's using some sort of rubric. That's mm. in its basic form. It's a rubric. It mm. doesn't matter um, what goes in the rubric because you can create your own and put your own text in there. So what goes in doesn't matter so much. What matters is the way it's used. So this is one of the also the powerful features about EduSS is um, there are rubric creators and so on out there. But with EduSS, you can create any what well, I say any almost any um, type of rubric. So for example. Say um, you want a rubric where any part of the criteria can be selected. So sometimes we assess like that, right? So mm-hmm. we say this rubric is divided into passing, control, dribbling, and shooting. Okay. Um, and it doesn't matter what the student gets in those. I just want to be able to tick anything at any point. So that's one stage. Yeah. However, sometimes we assess or some teachers assess or schools, they assess where uh, a grade so for example um it might be so let's make let's say uh, exceeding exceeding mm-hmm. contains control dribbling shooting and passing and it's incremental so i can only go from emerging to developing if i've got all of emerging so the only way i can get to developing is if i've got all of emerging for example sorry i know that you use you don't use emerging developing you use um emerging maturing applying is that yeah, right maturing. So, <laughs> yeah that's right that's right We've been so, so much i'm like i don't remember yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah so emerge emerging for example you can't get to maturing until you've got all of emerging and that might can contain control passing shooting so that's a different criteria then isn't it so yeah. Got this one where anything could be clicked, but then you've got this one with what we call incremental. So it's incremental, so you have to go uh, through the steps before mm-hmm. you can go up to another level. Whereas the other one, which is any, is any part can be selected, and based on what you select, will give you a grade. Yeah. So that's um. So th- I mean, I think, and then that's got more intricacies associated with it. But on that that fact that we could do that means that that should accommodate. If, you know every teacher who wants to assess using a rubric because right. that that's that will so- solve that problem um and then i guess one of the other things is that you have to select the grade grading type so on when you're creating your criteria we've got these grading types and you you select which one you use now we've covered what we think in terms of our research that covers sometimes you assess using a you want a percentage sometimes you use emerging exceeding sometimes in you know in the uk we have one to nine which is very common now in secondary schools so they use one to nine um sometimes they use one to ten some criteria is a one to 25 um so when you start, when you're creating criteria you select which part which one you want and the reason you have to select it is so that when you have your class it does traffic lighting and it's intelligent so traffic lighting yeah. Um, I'm sure you you call it the same thing. Yeah. So if they're above their target grade, it, it goes green. If they're equal to their target grade, it goes amber. And if they're below their target grade, it goes red. Which, so although that adds another step, it makes the platform more intelligent. Um, and again, it's all part of, like I said, other rubrics will do. You can create a rubric, but then it's these things. A teacher wants to no good creating a rubric, and then it doesn't feed into some database that you can modify and edit and play with. You know. Um, okay. So yeah, that's it. That's it. The being able to create almost any criteria is a, is also one of our unique things about it that solves that problem of being worldwide. Yeah. Right. Well, like I said, I really appreciate the uh, the changes and the. It's I think it's become simpler. It like and so I really, yeah. I, you know, I, I like that. And uh, so a couple more questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, what, yeah, sure. What, what is? Um, I guess I guess I could say what is your goal. Um, in the next year or so for EduSS or, w- or what's next on the on the horizon or uh, any updates or anything um, 
you got planned? Sure. Well, so first of all, you know, you're talking about it being simple. And um, that's also something that we we want to pride ourselves in. You know, obviously, my background being, a, you know, I'm a UX UI designer, product designer. Um, mm -hmm. I The key is making sure it's a really intuitive product. So we're constantly getting feedback. So actually, on the horizon, the plan isn't to try and add loads more features, because then that wouldn't, I feel, platforms that add loads of features become uh, overwhelming and they kind of go away from what they were initially intending to do, um, which can be fine in some situations, but I don't think more is always better. So actually we're focusing on trying to, we've got the core, what we think are the absolute core features in terms of, you know, you can create a criteria, you can add a class, you can carry out an assessment very quickly. Um, and then you've got, you know, some analytics where you can analyze the assessments you do and so forth. So, um, so we're doing that, but we, we don't want to actually introduce too many things. We're just going to make what we have more intuitive, slowly, and even better, um, and just constantly get feedback from people. Um, and the goal is essentially to um, help as many teachers uh, save time as possible. That is the goal. We just, we, yeah. If I, if, if the thing is, is obviously it's quite hard you saying it yourself because you're obviously it's like you're selling it. Um, but it's just it's essentially just to make sure that you know if every if everyone can save time using if you don't like it and it's not for you then of course uh, that's fine. Um, but we want to help those people who do spend their weekends marking and do uh, spend their evenings uh, marking and so on and give them more time so they can spend more time with their families. You know that that will, that uh, playing with your kid and taking them to the park that you might not have been able to do because you need to do marking you can now do that sort of thing. Right. So quality helping for a better quality. Uh, work-life balance and so on. Yeah, no, I love That's that. And you actually reminded me of a Steve Jobs uh, kind of philosophy for a second there because, um, you know, when he came back to Apple, you know, I, I don't know if you know much about Steve Jobs, but when he he was basically fired for a short term and then he came sure. back and and what they did was they he he cut back like they had like a hundred something products and he cut it down to like ten. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. and just made those obviously incredible and simplified and simplified mm -hmm. and simplified and just the core stuff, like you, you said. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I really appreciate that. I think that's a great answer too. Cause I was like, Oh, maybe, maybe there's keep adding, 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 but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. really a great product right now. So <laughs> as long as, you know, yeah, I yeah. think there's things like that could be, um, yeah, like I guess it's getting more feedback, people using it and uh, going from there and working, but like, yeah, there's no intention to, add loads of crazy features or, you know, doing, I, th I guess if there is a feature that's going to maybe be introduced, it might just be that uh, at the moment you can't, students can't log in and see their grades, um, which is not really, it is a feature, but it's not, I mean, that's not, it's not massive and that doesn't really complicate, it complicates from a development point of view, our side, but in terms of the user, the teacher who's using it, it doesn't complicate it much more um, because it's just so the student can log in and see it. Um, yeah. So yeah, great. no plans to go crazy with it. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. Quality. Well, yeah, right. Quality over quantity, right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I mean, thanks, Dean. I, I appreciate you being here. And uh, is there anything more you want to add or any final thoughts uh, for the PE community, the phys ed community? <laughs> no, I guess um, um, if you've used it, um, great. Um, feedback, even if it's bad, uh, it would be great if you could just um, yeah, provide any feedback just so we can make it better. Um, that'd be fantastic. And the way to do that, I guess, is there's a feedback tab on the site. So soon when you're on the site, uh, you just click on the feedback and just type what, what you know, what the issue was or whatever, and we're, we're just improve it. Um, that's, that'd be it. <laughs> um, yeah. That's great. And that, what I'll, I can do is I'll put the link in the, uh, the episode uh, notes and so they can check out uh, EduSess and if nothing mm -hmm. else, check it out and see if they like it. And Because uh, like I said, I think it's a great product and uh, yeah, it's, I think it's great for the phys ed community. Thank you. I think that's really kind to hear. Yeah. Thank well, thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. So uh, thanks again and we'll uh, talk soon. All right, everybody. Hope you had a fun listen there. Dean's a great guy, and I've gotten to know him a little bit over the past couple months. So I, again, I really appreciate him and his time and his team just uh, coming up with a great program for assessment that I'm going to be using quite a bit. 
and I already have started using it. Um, I just appreciate just all the work he's put into it, him and his uh, team there. So thank you so much for listening in. I will link up EduAssess in the episode notes. And as always, you can find me and my stuff at supersizephysit.com. So thank you again to Dean Heisman. He's awesome. And take care. And you guys are awesome.